Okay, so we're back at this job. Um, at this point, I've now fitted the cylinder. I uh, couldn't get hold of a gravity fed cylinder. Uh, couldn't get hold of a prime mic cylinder. So I've just kind of had to take my chances with a um, indirect cylinder. Um, I'll show you that bit in a minute. I'm bloody trying to get it all up and running. But um, also the main cause of this job was actually they've got a bit of a gas leak. And the plan in the previous job was go for an immersion, keep it running over the weekend, and then come and figure out the gas leak. So it turns out it's on that bit of pipe. Now, when SGN came out, they said it's on the barrel pipe work, probably going underneath the floor. But this barrel pipe work didn't actually go underneath the floor. You know, they just assumed it because it went underneath the cupboard. So I'm just kind of having a little look here. Just, I'm not sure why. I wasn't really sure which way to do it. I thought just, just bang it underneath the cupboard, and I thought it's probably better putting it on the wall. At least I can clip it. And I had this bit of an idea. <laughs> well, I kind of thought oh, I'll just chop out a bit of the cupboard, put a nighty bend on it, and kind of send it through. So that's what I did. We'll see. You got it's a proper multi tool that one. Because there's a hammer and everything. So I was actually quite happy with that. The, the, the hole was a bit big for it, but I was actually quite happy that um, I was just going to have it on the wall and kind of send it through there like that. Just banging a few clips on. Now the best bit of this bit was, I did actually try to measure out that 90 and I, I fucking had it measured and it was actually about a centimetre too long, so I just had to cut a little nib off. Right, it wasn't too bad. Obviously I always clean your copper tube. When I first started out, I just used just to use um, Everflux and on, on the new tube I didn't bother cleaning it, I just used to throw that shit in it. But I do actually believe that if you clean off the pipe good, then you actually get a better joint. I mean, obviously it was covered in paint and shit you need to do, but even on brand new copper, just give it a little clean off. Obviously watch out for the stickers as well. If you fucking cut a bit of tube where the sticker is, you're doomed, it'll leak all day long. I've got like this little green like pad thing and it's just awesome then after that I just use like a little bit of steel wool but the green pad thing is actually really really good obviously get yourself a nice lacing valve on it so at this point I'm still just like having the old hob used because I don't actually know what's going on because when I first came here I just um, isolated the hob on the isolation valve did a tightness test and it dropped. Ran around, isolated everything else and it dropped again. Then I just capped it off in that little corner bit and it held. Um, so at this point I'm still just, you know, just, just having basically just a leak fix on the pipe. I mean, here I was hoping to put like a nice little sexy little offset in there, but the pipe work was just too rigid because I had it in that corner and clipped. And the gas run literally comes from the meter about one meter to the right through the kitchen sink cupboard, drops down, tees off, splits this way and splits the rest of the way around the house. So there wasn't any movement on it whatsoever. So as you know, you've got to do what you've got to do. It's all good pulling bends everywhere, but you can't get them in, you can't get them in. The mad thing was that the, the, like the small little lock up there, about seven or eight centimetres, 
literally that was an offcut that I already had sat there, so it ends up being measure it. I think when it comes to soldering, um, I'm more of the opinion I do kind of like to see a little bit just so I know it's done. Um, as opposed to going like the you know smallest amount possible, which, which is nice. It looks good. Don't get me wrong, but you know I'm I'm not that kind of person. I just kind of drop a bit in the back. Um, I'll have a try to do a half decent job of it. If I get a little snot, I, I get, you know I've, I've got a little snot. I couldn't give a shit really. As long as it don't fucking leak, I don't really care. You know if I'm having to try to solder some underground leak in a fucking massive apartment block and I'll, sm I'll smear that shit up with solder. Just got to do what you got to do. And obviously if it's exposed, I'll try and do a little bit better. So now I'll just turn the gas back on and I'm just like, fucking hell, the hub's got a little gas leak there. Now this hub is a um, Neff hub. And this fucker must be about 200 years old. Cause I've never seen a gas hub, which is like this. Doesn't actually have like a, like a main injector fin sat down there. Cause it's got a fucking hole with loads of rust in it. But even at this point, I'm kind of thinking, well, I'll just kind of take the handle apart, put a bit of gas grease on it, and I can probably make it work. Then I turn on the main burn and I'm just like, you know, I just can't do this, mate. It has to go. So I'm thinking, for fuck's sake. So the gas leaks turned to a new cylinder, a new header tank, and now a new bloody gas hub. That's obviously how I fitted the gas hub. Nice little sex little offset there. I was loving that. Don't get me wrong, the next time it's that fucking 290s because I was done. I was finished with this shit. So that's the um, warm air unit. That's where the pilot light is. That's obviously your, uh, your igniter and your spark thing. Now on these type of units, you ever get like the warm air unit and then you've got the little gas um, hot water circulation heater which is on the side, that's a separate bloody thing. Now if you get this kind of setup, just just have it in your head, you've probably got a Primark cylinder. Almost 100% you're going to have a Primark cylinder because in the manufacturing instructions of these devices, that's what they're showing you to fit. So if you ever see this, think straight away Primark. And on the other side today, we do just see a cylinder, you think it might be a normal cylinder. Maybe see if it's got like a, um, a Spartan. Because um, apparently people used to fit Spartans to other hot water cylinders around this kind of age. Which is another fucking crazy setup. Um, I'm trying to think how it worked. But you basically um, add like a big copper cylinder type thing. And the hot water feed pipe would go into it. And the boiler feed pipe would go into it. And it, it kind of act like an expansion vessel type thing. And it's just fucking crazy. I've never actually seen one out in the wild. That's why I don't really know much about it. But if you Google um, Spartan hot water or Spartan copper cylinder, you'll kind of see it. So now I'm just testing it. That's obviously the fan unit down at the bottom. I was curious as to what this switch was. I think it's kind of like it, it makes sure the doors close before the fan will work. Probably to stop it trying to pump it out into the room. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't really too sure. a bit of LDF. Obviously don't spray your LDF, you know. What, 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 I'm trying to think of the same way you say, don't do what I say, but, well, well I can't think what it is, but e either way, spraying it's not the best. If you get like the liquid stuff, a little dab on there. That's obviously the wiring diagram, because I was very, very curious to what that switch actually did. So yeah, that's, that's that bit of it done. And that just basically, um, tunnels around all the warm air. See, I was just trying to see if actually everybody got the pilot light lit because I couldn't see it from the front. And the sparker wasn't, didn't seem to really work, so I just banged the bloody blowtorch up there, to be honest with you. So 
So yeah, here my thoughts was, um, I think it was struggling to circle it. So if I return off that return, then it like heats up that flow. It might just push it all up the flow. Then also open up the return, it all kind of works. Because I could feel a little bit trying to creep up the return as well. I mean, uh, uh, you know, there's a bit that I kind of can start to be the one that's actually really trying to blow torch that flow pipe just to heat the shit out of the water that was in it and try and send it up. Literally had a blow torch before the gate valve and after the after the gate valve, heating up the water in the pipe, trying to help it, to, uh, you know, trying to just have it sent up there, but it just wouldn't have it. And at this point, I'm thinking to myself, why the fuck did you not put the vent on the flow of the cylinder coil and the cold feed on the return of the cylinder coil? Because that might have actually helped it to circulate because you're kind of creating that little bloody loop. You know, you've got like the upward pressure of the heat going up, you've got the downward pressure of the cold on the return. Surely that's going to make it just go around in circles. But... You know, it's one of the things, when I was looking at it, I was thinking, that's what I need to do. And when I actually did it, I thought, no, fuck that. I'm going to make it quick. And obviously on that return there as well, I put a fucking bend on it, didn't I? So it's not, it wasn't like I could just cut it and put a T on it, because it had to be bent. But yeah, that's how it was piped up. Um, had a tank there. It was, you know, it's... It's a combined cold feed and vent, but it does have a cold feed and vent. But with these systems, they're good for stopping air problems. You know, kind of masquerading some problems as well. You know, you might not have the right pump set up to what you've got as your head set up, all that kind of stuff. And you do this, it might make it better. But I think just for clearing air out of a system, there's nothing that beats the standard type of H system. You know, or your, 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 your vent goes in one side, your cold feed goes in the other side. It gives that circulation. It's always going to be much better to get air out. These systems are fucking better. You can do it on a private ease and beg them for trouble. So yeah, the top tip there is don't do what I did. So yeah, I'm just trying to um, have, have the cold feed closed off. I'm trying to wet back it through the vent and try and pull it up. But it wouldn't have it because the Hoover just what yeah, just didn't have that kind of power to pull water up a 22 mil pipe, fucking six or seven meters. So yeah, it was a bit of a hard day. I was just, just saying to myself, mate, you should have just put a cold feed on it. You should have done flow off the top, cold feed on the bottom. And you didn't because you're lazy and now you're struggling. Now I'm thinking, well, maybe I just don't do the top pile. Now I need it to do. But the problem was it kind of gets to the top coil but it wasn't able to circulate through the coil. So as you can see there, I've just got a set of 45s and then the feed up the T-piece. Um, I was just going to go straight up with the vent and just like a T-piece going straight into the cylinder. But I thought I need to try and persuade to go around that corner. I would have liked to have pulled a 90 degree bend on it. But by the time I put a mic on it and a T on it, it's been like the ripple joint of the pipe, so I just couldn't, it was just too tight to get a mic on it. Um, so that's why I did it like that. Obviously, perfect world, I pulled a mic on it and then probably set the T in the same place to finish with you. Um, so I thought that would have been a bit nicer and probably a lot easier to go around. I was still just thinking, my oh God, it's pretty good for the coil. And when I actually got this cylinder, I could actually look inside it, and I thought the coil would have gone down here, so surely it must go. Um, but yeah, it's the pipe layout, I think. I think in hindsight, if you didn't do the cold feed, maybe put an air vent on the return. But, you know, I'm, I'm not even sure if that would have helped it, to be honest with you. That's me struggling down the side. So now, and I thought, hang on a minute, this fucking unit's got a bloody thermostat inside it. What about 
if I disconnect the thermostat. So now it's like, what about if I disconnect the thermostat and just basically boil it up a little bit? Which, you know, if you're not old school enough, which I obviously ain't, because I'm fucking not 55 years old, you don't really know how far to go with it. But a quick question here, actually, everybody knows about these units. Would this have worked on a sealed system? Can you have a sealed system with gravity? Um, cause I'm not, I'm not sure. I've got no idea whether you can have a pressurized unit and still get it working on gravity because that might be the better option. But yeah, I've just basically got the, uh, the thermostat pulled out and I'm just trying to heat it up until I shit myself basically and then push it back in. Cause the thing is I've not been taught this kind of stuff, you know, I wasn't around 80 year old lads pulling thermostats out of boilers and watching them overheat. So Anyway, I gradually did it and it started warming up and that was two or three days ago and I've not heard anything since, so I'm assuming it's all still working. But yeah, main takeaway from this, if you see this Starley and Johnson unit, just assume you've got a Primark cylinder and if you'd have to swap it for an indirect, probably do a cold feed in the vent separately and if you're still struggling, pull out the thermostat and you know have it out for as long as what you're there. Yeah, I hope that helps someday, and if you like it, um, subscribe, and all that kind of good stuff. Thank you.